Hello, uh, how's everyone doing today? We are here in a very intimate room. Uh, we are in the bedroom of Kinsella, and as you can tell, there's a lot of action. It's the guest, the guest bedroom, by the there's way. A lot of, hey, stop interrupting me. Sunglasses on. That's there's where he went to get sunglasses. There's a lot of. No, no, no. I went to get a. Uh, I went to get a cup of tea. As Brett. Oh, tea. Of, tea. And he also thinks he's Jack Nicholson with the shade. A How are you, tea. Kinsella? I am. I'm okay. Are you just okay? I'm very oh, well. Look, even your nephew's wearing shades. Are you going to introduce your nephew? That's Thomas Turner, my nephew. My Are you wife. related to Ted? Ted Turner? Yeah. Probably lots of Turners. Probably go far back enough we're all related. All right. Yeah. Well, then you can never have sex with anyone. It'll be like my life. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Good yeah. idea. All right. So uh, a lot of interesting topics on... Whoa. That came out of nowhere. A lot of interesting topics on today's show... Uh, first, uh, I guess, topic uh, I'm interested in talking about are uh, these libertarians, and I think they're a bit nuts, these, you know, who are skeptical, just every, anything mainstream must be wrong. You know, this anti-science, anti-vaccine, anti-GMO, uh, poisoning our water, the government uh, types. What, what, what are your thoughts on those? Well, my personal thoughts on it is that if people want to ex <laughs> if people want to experiment with with things, then go ahead. But it's when you come to sell it, I think that if you don't let people know, and we just, we don't need uh, government to put labels on shit and stuff like that. If you don't let people know what you've done to something, then I think that uh, you are you know committing some kind of fraud. Yeah, I think the question, though, is kind of assuming that these people are generally wrong, and then you're asking a psychological question like, like to psychologize them. It's like, why are they wrong? So <laughs> then the question is, why does the libertarian movement tend to draw conspiracy nuts and weirdos and losers? Right? That's really the question. Yeah, I mean, I'm not so one of those. You're taking for granted that, that people that believe that you shouldn't vaccinate your kids and that the Earth is 6,000 years old and that... 9-11 was caused by George Bush administration or whatever. You're assuming they're all wrong, which I agree with you on. I think they're all totally nuts. But then doesn't that beg the question, shouldn't people, uh, shouldn't people question everything that happens? Does that, mean, does that mean if people question things, you know, uh, like if I was to say, well, why did WTC7 fall by itself and why did these buildings fall into their own footprint, does that mean then by me asking those questions that I get classified as a nut? If it's a real question, no, but I don't think 99% of the people asking those questions are really asking a real question. It's, it, it, they pose it as a question, but it's really a statement. What they're saying is it's obviously implausible, the conventional explanation, and we can't explain it using the conventional explanations, and therefore there's something else going on there. And they never tell you exactly what else is going on. They don't know what really – in other words, they don't believe the official story. And, of course, if you do, you're a statist because you're believing the government. You know. But if you say, well, then what exactly happened? They say, well, I don't know. The government's keeping a secret. So there's some kind of secret conspiracy. They don't know. And I, I, I actually think that these people give the government way too much credit. I, I sort of agree with Michael Schumer. Who said, you know how we know that 9 11 was not an inside job? Because it worked. Government is more incompetent than I think the liberally evil, uh, my own personal view. I, I think they're just incompetent, and thank God for that because they do very destructive things. But they're, I think it's more incompetent than these brilliant, brilliant masterminds who. You mean, uh, you Michael Humor or Michael, who's Michael Schumer? Is it Michael Humor? You sorry, mean the Michael Schumer, sorry. Yeah. Well, is it humor or Schumer? Because humor is the, the, the skeptic guy. Yeah, humor. Michael Schumer, the skeptic. Right. Yeah, there's a Chuck Schumer. Yeah, sorry, Michael Schumer. Yeah. Um, well, so the question is why do libertarians tend to be more – look, I think to be a libertarian in the first place, you have to be the type of person who's willing to challenge conventional wisdom, right? Um, Not necessarily. Well, I think you're not going to become a libertarian unless you're the type of person who is willing to challenge what you're taught and what's conventional wisdom. And so we're going to tend to draw people that are already willing to challenge almost everything they, they hear. 
So you're naturally going to get a disproportionate uh, amount of uh, conspiracy nuts, Holocaust deniers, anti-vaccine types, whatever, uh, in our movement. That's just part of the process. I mean, when you relegate a movement to a minority status, you make them basically into a movement that's going to attract primarily losers, and by that I mean people with nothing to lose. Right? Because if like, let's suppose you have good political talent. If you have really good political talent, you're going to go to the Republican and Democrat Party because that's where you're going to have success. Right? If you have really good talent, most people won't throw it away by becoming a libertarian candidate in the LP. So the LP is going to tend to draw low quality political candidates. They might have the better ideas, but they're going to be lower quality in terms of their their presentation skills, you know, their 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 persona. If they had really good skills in that way, they would tend to be regular politicians in the first place. So I think there's a reason why we tend to draw people that have these um, non-conventional views. Yeah, and I, I think it's very self-destructive too because if if you have libertarians going around saying, you know, uh, uh, we never landed on the moon, it was just a conspiracy, people are going to say, well. The average person is saying, "Well, you're just an idiot." So of course you're going. Well, what you you believe all these other crazy things? Why should I listen to you when you say that government is just a violent gang? You believe all these nutty things? No, I take you seriously. So I think they're very. I think that they're they're a destructive part of the movement. I think they're harmful, but I don't think it's honestly the libertarians I usually associate with. I don't see a large percentage of them being these conspiracy nut types. When you go to these. Uh, these meetings with the average person, yeah, you get that. You get or get Republicans and Rand Paul supporters and Ted Cruz supporters and you know Tea Party types and people that want to vote and all this kind of stuff. So you get that. But among the more intelligent libertarians, most of them I found aren't really like that. So I, I haven't seen that problem um, too much. Why don't we see what a young person thinks about it? Thomas, what do you think about what? <laughs> I think he's had a little too much. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> About uh, are there two? Uh, do you think liber uh, Do you think there's people in that are activists for liberty that tend to believe crazy things and that hurts our message? I mean, there's there's people that hurt that hinder arguments on both sides. I think. Um, I, I don't. I mean, honestly, I haven't been <laughs> in current events for like the last two years. But um, because you're getting what kind of degree? Uh, chemical engineering. Yeah, a real degree. See, he doesn't time for this kind of stuff. Is so. that a dick? Is that a dick or a rough child? No, economics no. is a real degree. No, I, I, sounds I, like I, it's a dick or a rough child to me. No, no, not at all. I think, I, I, Daniel, if he actually takes his his new uh, academic uh, pursuit seriously, I think he's going to have less time for this kind of stuff starting next semester, right? Oh yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. Isn't that correct? <clears throat> Uh, yes, that is correct. But didn't you say there were some schools you didn't want to go to because they had too much math? <clears throat> or is that someone else I know? Uh, that's me. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't like. I'm not big with the numbers, you know. Uh, yeah. I want to go back to this harming, you know, harming the libertarian movement, whatever, by talking about conspiracy stuff. Um, I don't think it does harm it in uh, because there are people that do vote. And left and right, and they also talk about this shit. They also talk about this. They talk about this stuff. If anything, it may be a way in. And I think somebody just increased their um, volume because I got a bit of feedback here. That was uh, the, the government that did that, James. Not, okay. not. It, you know, if anything, I think that it opens a door to um, talk to people um about libertarianism what i do see harmful and destructive is when libertarians if they agree on the non-aggression principle if they agree on the philosophy of liberty that uh, you know you have the right to your whatever the fruits of your labor and you 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 are free to distribute it how you want and that they recognize the government as a monopoly on force, that type of thing. And they agree on the, the core sole value of anarchism, libertarianism, right? That it's wrong to aggress against somebody unless they're attacking you. When these people are attacking one another online, arguing, and coming across like nut jobs just because they don't agree on certain things, when people see that, you know, people falling out amongst themselves 
I think that actually is is destructive. Well, so here, here I, I, I would say this: uh, the conspiracy things. Um, I don't think that a reason against it is that it 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 turns off the average person because you could say that about a lot of our good principled views. You know, if you say you're for total drug legalization, not just marijuana decriminalization or regulation, you say, I want all drugs to be decriminalized. And then you say, I'm not just for lower taxes, I'm for all taxes being abolished. Those positions seem as crazy to the ordinary person as the 9-11 truther stuff, but yet we're correct on that. So the fact that some things we say is going to turn off people or make, make us seem crazy to them is not a reason to oppose it. I agree with you on that. Now, on the, on the libertarian… Sorry, no, you can oppose it because it's wrong. <laughs> well, I, th I think that, yeah, the, the reason to oppose it is just, it's, it's just not, there's no basis in reality. In other words, you don't have to be, have uh, uh, these wild views about what the government is capable of to oppose the government. Some of these conspiracy theorists, I think, almost believe that if you didn't believe the government had the power to have chemtrails in the sky and Skynet. <laughs> You know, and uh, secret tunnels underground, whatever they're believing next. Maybe the Charlie Charlie. What's the Charlie Charlie thing? You know, this this demon thing that the kids are trying to. Oh Charlie. God, that thing's going on. Yeah. Or whatever. I saw that on Reddit. I'm sure someone's blaming that on the government too. I'm just saying that you know. <laughs> I mean, look, we're we have views that are not mainstream. Now, as for James, as for libertarians having infighting. I, I agree it can turn some people off, but on the other hand, I think it's resulted – it's the result of passion in the movement. People talk about this because they're passionate, and I've seen in my evolution in the movement the last 30 years, I've seen my thought and others' thought develop because of vigorous, yeasty, fierce, passionate debate back and forth over these little tiny issues, and people do that because they care about the ideas, and they finally you know, hammer out an idea… Or a truth, or a principle, and they they come up with clarity out of it. So I don't think it's a bad thing at all to have these. Yeah, but don't you, don't you think that people arguing that are on the same you know um, lines with the non-aggression principle, it, it it's to me it's it's kind of like taking sand to the beach. You 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 the you know I think there's going and discussing this with people that think that you know. We need government because if not, everybody's going to be going around uh, killing and murdering people and eating one another's faces off, right? <laughs> Having discussions with these people, that's what they think. They think it's just going to be total chaos, that people will be you know, breaking into people's houses, stealing shit. It'll be pandemonium, right? They're, because they'll be, they'll be brainwashed. Oh, well, that'll be anarchy, right? Well, we know that that's not what anarchy means, but right. people have been brainwashed into thinking that that is what anarchy is. And yet, people that are anarchists know that anarchy is 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 not that. That's what the uh, mainstream media have have told people through television, and therefore they believe that um, those kind of uh, behaviors is anarchy when it's not. Um, well, but, a lot, but a lot of these debates we have, number one, they're witnessed by people on the sides that are lurking, so they learn. They read, they listen, they think, they hear. So they hear these debates, and a lot of these debates change people's minds. I mean, I've seen all intellectual property and anarchy and other issues over the years. I've seen people change. I've changed my mind on some issues. I've changed my mind on uh, the, the the socialist calculation debate issue. You know, the Hayekian knowledge problem. I, w I thought one thing. I went. I went from minarchist to anarchist. You know, um, I went from pro IP to anti IP. Lots of people change. In their personal view, and even if you only change your mind and maybe two or three other people's minds, that's positive development. There's nothing wrong with that. How is it going to happen? You're not going to learn it in school. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with infighting in the sense, and I agree with Kinsella on this. That you know, if 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 you constantly stroke people and say, "Oh, you're right. Uh, we can't criticize. Thou shall not criticize another libertarian," then you you don't really you're not really defending your views. You're not learning how to defend your views. But you know when people say, well, you know, if you believe this and this and that, then how can you believe that? You really have to think of good arguments and defend your views in a very uh, good way. Well, not now, only that, it's, like, it's not like there's some altruistic duty that if you're a libertarian, you have to devote all your time towards maximizing the human, you know, the libertarian project of trying to expand liberty 
and everything you have to do has to be calculated through that lens, you might just want to do it as a hobby and for your own interest and for your own circle of friends or whatever. You know, just because you're not talking to outsiders as much as you could be, so what? Maybe you want to talk to other libertarians. I mean, that's a reason. There's a reason we congregate together in some in some um, forums. You know. I think it's just a way that it's done. What do you do fish in a barrel? People who are so far gone on so many issues, it's like why why even waste your time? You know. Yeah, but that I even that's an activist perspective. Like right. you're saying, like you're saying, like the the way we have to judge whether th this is appropriate or not is how how many people you're going to convert right. or whatever. It's like its own paradox. It's not everyone, it, maybe not everyone agrees with. Maybe maybe we're not all doing it for those yeah, reasons. I mean, why do it anyway? You know, I mean, oh. all, all three of us are going to the pork fest in New Hampshire next month, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Am I right, guys? James, you're yeah. bringing the the, the ganji. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Oh, by the way, do you know how hard it is? Telling your Jewish family you're going to pork fest, they're like, "How far have you fallen?" I'm like, "No, that's not what pork means here." Well, I, I, if, I would say I'm going to the Porcupine Freedom Festival in New Hampshire, mother. Very Don't proper. Worry. I'm not gonna. It's not pork like pork. Yeah. What's it matter anyway? Man? You're, you're an atheist, aren't you? You're not a Jew anymore. Uh, so if, well, if, if I if I may, if I if I may, to go back on what James was talking about. Uh, he was talking about the media portrayal of you know most most things. So like, there's a nut job saying something. Most of the time, the media is you know it's I guess it's all leftist. As I'm just gonna regurgitate things, but I mean, that's that's the main thing that's getting out there to people like myself. Like that's what that's what I'm seeing. So like, if you know you've got a libertarian that's you know all gung ho on these conspiracies, like you guys are saying, then that's what we're seeing, and then that's where. We're gonna be like, whoa, you know. But then, you know, you got like however many years ago, whenever uh, Ron Paul ran, and then everybody was like gung ho about that. That was kind of like our generation was all about it, you know. But um, I don't know. It it, it depends on the situation. Just to go back to that discussion, I th I, that's what I was trying to think on for a second. Well, why, since we have a a 22 year old on the on the thing, why don't we ask him? He's a chemical engineering student, which means he's smart, but he's not that libertarian because he he's in chemi. Right. So find out what, where how libertarian he is. You guys quiz him. I, I want to see your questions. How libertarian are you? No, you can't just. You got to give him some parameters. <laughs> he's a, he's an engineer. But uh, what role do you think the government ha has in our lives? What should the government do? Um, I mean, the government should just. Uh... Nope, he's not that libertarian. <laughs> he didn't put the word no. <laughs> yeah, but you you use government instead of state, so you, you're the one who messed up. <laughs> What do you mean? There is. I don't think it matters. Well, we're not opposed to the state. We're not opposed to government. This is one problem. Libertarian. You the same might not be, but I am. What's the difference? It's the same thing. <laughs> it's not the same thing. That's why it there's is two the same thing. I agree well, with that. We're not opposed to governance. I'm opposed to government. Government but, means the governing institutions of society, and in a in a free market society, we would have law and order and institutions. Would that, be, I will would, you, would that be consensual? I will would that be consensual? More accurately. What role do you think is legitimate? What are legitimate state functions? Is this for me? Yeah. Uh, so I run into somebody on the. Like he's I, asking you first. Do you think the state? Is, so he's asking you what the state should should the state exist, and if it does, what should it be? I mean, there needs to be some sort of. Governing right. That's government. See, that's why you have to distinguish. This is exact. You see, this is this is why you have to distinguish government from state. Fine. Uh, what, what's it's your name? Again? What's your name again? Thomas. Thomas. What is the difference between government and state? You don't even know. Why are you asking him? Because there is right, no so difference. <laughs> my definition, based on my knowledge as of now, the governing a governing body just does exactly what what it means. It just governs the people. So if Shit hits the fan. Um, in some scenario with me and my uncle, like say, like I run into his car or something. There's some sort of body that guides us to the process of what we need to do. He's thinking of government as a, synonymous with law, which is what most people do. So when they hear us say we're anti-government, they think we're against law, which is what the minarchists and the statists use against us. So they say, oh, you're anti-government, so you're against law and order, right? You hear this all the time. Anarchists, we hear this all the time. 
So I always say, no, I'm not against government. I'm against the state. And then they say, well, what's the state? The state is a territorial, m monopolistic agency you know, that has a monopolistic control over the use of violence in a given how, how, well, Hold on a minute. How come you've now dominated the conversation? Isn't this ask Thomas some questions to find <laughs> out? <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you, you think about ask the right Fine, I'll I'm ask, sorry. I'll ask him a question. Go ahead. I'll ask him a question. Do you support the use of violence against me if I disagree with you? Answer Rothschild's question. That wasn't that wasn't my question. I mean, if you disagree with me, I don't I don't really. What What do you mean by violence? Like, are we and you going to fight, or what? He means a law. He means if you support a law that <clears> would <throat> impose government force against you, uh, like let's say you and he disagree on whether you should pay ta whether he should have to pay taxes. So you both disagree, but in the end, you would support the use of the government laws to put him in jail if he doesn't pay those taxes. So you, you might let him have his freedom of speech, but in the end, you're going to jail him for not paying the taxes. You follow if me? I'm, if I'm, so if I am the like metaphysical government governing body… No, like what kind of laws are you in favor of? What kinds do you think are justified? Like do you think it would be justified to have a law that would put Rothschild in jail in, if he didn't pay the taxes you think he should pay? That's what he's asking. I don't think you should pay taxes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so you just made him happy. This reminds me of a scene in New York. Um, oh my God! Are you doing a, Jew a Jewish chant? <laughs> I'm doing my Jewish rain dance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I got a I got an argument earlier with a a guy. What was it? It was it was a Facebook argument, which nobody ever wins, and it was. I win. We were talking about like patriotism or something, and it was about like Na nationalism. nationalism. Right, exactly. And I was like, yeah, you know, you know, good for him. And that sparked something like, oh, you're not, you, you don't believe in America. And I'm like, no, man. Like these people nowadays, you know, you know, he didn't, he didn't get drafted. He chose to go. You know. And so I was like, so I mean, I support, I guess, like, but I mean, he chose to do that, and then I'm getting shat on by all these people because I. I just said that one thing, and I'm like, dude. I was like, you know, it, 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 it. That was his choice. You know, he chose to join the army. I don't have to like. I don't have to praise him for for a, a choice. You know what I mean? Okay, let me ask you this. Most of your classmates, kids you know at LSU, are they liberal, conservative, apolitical, or libertarian? How does that work? All right. So most of the engineering majors I know probably tend to sway. Uh, since they're all coming from engineering fam families, those tend to be like conservative types. But then, but are they conservative in the sense that they they want gays to go to jail and gay marriage illegalized and pot? They want people. What well, conservative to wants gays to go to jail? Yeah, are they like the old old no, school conservatives? I don't think they're old school conservatives. They're, they're, they're like they're tolerant because they're, they're like soft libertarians. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, that probably what, be. What, cool. what conservatives want gays to go to jail? Well, so it's illegal in many states, you know. All, all these Bible Belt places like Louisiana. For, I mean, for, for they don't believe in gay marriage, but that all that means is that the government would not recognize them being married. It doesn't mean they go to jail. That's no, like so, 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 sodomy is a crime. Sodom, look up Bowers v. Hardwick, man. Famous case. Sodomy is a crime in many states still. Let me know so I won't go <laughs> no, um, Are you married? Me? Or gay? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm neither married nor gay. He might, he's gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> James, I think I know if he's, I'm gay. He's gay, but not that way. <laughs> no, I'm not. He's not a man, nor am I Daniel, 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 Daniel is not gay, but his boyfriend is. I'm not. James says I'm gay, but not that way. I'm neither happy, Talk. nor do I have hey, a the guys. So I'm gay in neither sense. Cox is from Britain, so every night he lights a bundle of faggots to keep warm. I'm just saying. I don't think you should be calling anyone gay. But I, I think very few conservatives, if you would ask the average conservative, do you believe it should be a crime to be gay? They're not going to say yes. I know many conservatives. None say yes. They're against gay marriage, but all get being against gay marriage means is that I don't believe... I don't recognize the fact that you're married. So if you're wearing a blue shirt, and I say I don't, re I don't think government should recognize the color blue. That doesn't mean you're going to go to jail if you wear the color blue. Go, go, go some echo. 
for some reason. Yeah. How, how how it? Let me ask you a question. Do you guys believe? So here's my view. My view on gay marriage has been um, uh, probably not the typical one in libertarian circles for the last ten years, but my view is that as a practical matter, the government should recognize gay marriage. The state should recognize gay marriage. Look, uh, the, uh, my the, view. The, uh, the, the no. thing about this, the thing about this gay gay marriage thing is, it all boils down to when two people of the same sex, you know, live together. So and everyone's got, that way, not just me. No, and they've got. Well, I think it's because Kinsella's speakers are up too high, or his microphone's up too high, or something. It's too sensitive. A little bit too sensitive for some reason. Um, Hold on. Um, okay. So I think. This. It's going now, yeah. All right. So I, I think what it boil, boils down to is when, like, let's say a cop or somebody in the military has a, the same-sex partner, right? And then for unfortunate reasons, they die. Because it's the same-sex partner, they can't get to claim the benefits what it would be if it's not a same-sex uh, partner. That's the only reason that people want this to be a law, in my opinion. They, they, they don't really care about the piece of paper and things like that. They just want the benefits that, that people that are not the same sex. Now, the uh, echo is really bad. How do we fix that? Um, uh, we don't think it's us. Oh. It's not you, it's me? <laughs> Wait, do my you guys base. hear an echo right now? No, no. but it's... You hear an echo now when I'm speaking. Yes. We don't hear any echo. Whatever. It's not. It's not horrible, horrible, but it's not great. Um. That's strange. Yeah. So I mean, I just privatize it. Get government out of marriage is my view. And yeah, let but I actually, do, I actually don't. I mean, I'm not gay. Uh, only like two percent gay, maybe. But. <laughs> <laughs> And that's just a concession to a gay guy that convinced a guy named Klaus in you know, you know, Provincetown, Rhode Island, uh, Massachusetts, one one bizarre summer. <laughs> he got me to admit I was one percent gay, whatever. <laughs> no, but my I don't think that that's the only reason they want it. They want it for several reasons. Some of which are are, are good, some of which are not. They want to use the power of the state to force. Regular people to acknowledge their relationships and to—they're trying to change social mores. They're trying to use the government to do that. I think they want it because heterosexuals have it, and and they say, well, why should one group of people the state should recognize as marriage, and why not me? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not. Yeah, but of course that 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 line of argument goes. I mean, wh where do you end it? Let's say two two sisters live together. I agree. That's sisters. why government should not be involved in marriage. Well, yeah, because it, it, they should see what they want. Like this is kind of. I always thought it was a stupid debate. I always thought it was all distracting from like the real. There should be, actually, the real issues of like what the, what they shouldn't have power over. Like you know, abortions. They shouldn't like like. It, it's all common sense to me. I feel like the 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 debate is really about property rights and access and things like that and defaults and money. You can create. A simulation of a marital regime with contracts if you have enough money and s sophistication. Most people don't, and it's unfair to subject some people to that. Okay, um, you know if you're the lesbian lover of some chick you've been with for 13, 15, 20, 30 years, and she's dying in the hospital and you can't visit her because you're not officially a spouse. That's a horrible thing, and that's caused by government intervention in the market, right? And we all know that the right solution is government to get out of it. We all know that. Um, and I do believe a lot of gays want the law changed as a thin end of the wedge, as the nose of the camel under the tent to try to start changing the definition of anti-discrimination laws. In other words… Right now, it's actually a crime in m many states to be to, to perform homosexual uh, activities. So you could never argue that um, that homosexuals are a suspected a suspect class under the civil rights law. That you can't discriminate against gays in employment, etc. But as soon as you knock those barriers down, 
and you allow gay marriage, then they could start arguing next that they should be included in the suspect class in the anti-discrimination laws. And I do believe that's one of their big political programs, and I totally and disagree a, and that's with that. a problem, and that's one reason – I mean probably the only legitimate reason against gay marriage because <laughs> yeah. we don't want that happening, obviously. Um, yeah, but, but – That will just lead to more lawsuits and violations of private property. And, and laws and legislation, but right. the, the big issue with gay marriage is that this whole debate is about the use by the government of a word. It's about a definition. In other words, if the state had a provision in, the, in, in, its, in its civil law, property law statutes saying a civil union declared by two competent adult people or two or more, it doesn't matter, here, they can arrange their affairs as they see fit. We're going to call it a civil union, let's say. If they did that, they would take away the steam out of the uh, gay movement because then they would be left with saying, well, a civil partnership is not good enough. We want the state to call it marriage, and if that was their only issue left, then we libertarians, conservatives, then we would have a good argument against it. We say, listen, you already have the government courts enforcing your agreements. Respecting your rights, everything's the same. It's just that the, 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 the title, the caption on the statute doesn't say the word marriage. It says civil partnership. So it all comes down to a debate over a word, and if we did that, then we would take the force out of their arguments. But well, because the government is run by conservatives – go ahead. I think that is a conservative argument. The conservative argument is they should have the same legal protections, but they – the conservatives don't want to change anything, so they, they don't want to change the word marriage. A marriage should be between a man and a woman, so call it something else. Well, they that's what I just said. If, if we called it civil partnerships and gave them the exact same substantive protections under the law, then the gays would have no legitimate complaint. The conservatives would have no, no legitimate complaint, oh, that's good. and their complaints would all become transparently obviously bad then. So the conservatives would, would then be arguing that… My argument is that the government should not respect contracts, which is stupid, and the gays would be saying, well, they're giving us everything we want, but they don't have the right word in the caption of this statutory section in the code. They're I calling it civil union instead of marriage. Though, that's Look, if, if, if oh, one group of people – the word, the word civil union has less uh, meaning to people than marriage. It's sort of like it's the meaning. To people, oh, I'm only in a civil union where someone else is married. Why? That's like I'm a second-class citizen. Why should I have a less status? And this goes back to the libertarian point that it, it, the government shouldn't be involved in this and that – look, just because the state recognizes a, the legal incidence of a regime of a relationship between two people and labels it marriage or maybe doesn't. It doesn't matter in a given state. doesn't force you as a civ civilian to call them married. You don't have to call them married if you don't want to. You can call them, you know, sodomites or, or heathens <laughs> or whatever you want to say. You can do whatever you want. You're not forced to use that label. To me, the word that's used is a conventional thing, and right. society decides that. And over time, I think personally that over time, in a cosmopolitan, advanced, industrial, so secular society, people are going to get over their freaking religious hangups, and they're going to say. Fine. I've got two good friends or two guys, two women, whatever. They want to have a ceremony. They invited me to it. I'm going to go to it. They have a minister or someone who you know performs a ceremony. They want to say they're married. I'm not going to be a dick. You know, fine. I'll use that. You know, if you've got a friend who has a, a sex change operation and goes from male to female, most decent people, out of politeness, will say. You know, her instead of him after a while. But if someone's being a jerk and they, they want to change their name every five days, <laughs> today I'm Prince, today I'm Symbol Man, today I'm Mr. This, today I'm Miss That, people are going to say, you're just an idiot, you're, you're freaking with our lives. You know, we don't, we don't care about your stupid stuff. Yeah. I think it's just social conventions. It's really got nothing to do with liberty or libertarian theory. Yeah. But James has been silent. Let's see what James is up to. Well, people should be, uh, you know, free to get into whatever consensual, uh, you know, relationships that uh, they want to get into. And uh, I don't think that uh, pieces of paper or 
um, government should have anything to do with it. If somebody wants to have somebody's pension, if they pass away, then that should be stated right from the point, you know, the part of employment. But obviously, some people are going to say, "No, we're employing you," which they have a right to. Um, basically, if you have a, you know, if you're a man, if you're a male, and you're married to a female, she will have rights to it. Or if you're a female, and you're married to a male, he will have rights to it. But if you're a, a female and you have a female partner, they won't have rights to it. Or if you're male and uh, you have a male partner, they won't have rights to it. So th this is the problem that they see that because they are in the same relationship with, uh, you know, if it's a male and a male and a female and a female, they want to have the same um, rights, as, as they may want to call it, as people that are different sex. So who better to turn to in their case than the government to force changes to say to companies, you can't discriminate. If somebody comes, I, I'm not saying it's right, you know, somebody comes and they want to name somebody as their beneficiary if they die, then you've got to do it because um, it's the unfortunate world that we live in that um, that that's the only way uh, that these people are going to get their, you know, get their way. Unless they can they can they can approach a company that uh, does see everybody, whoever they're married to, as no different to anybody else. And so therefore, um, if you get employed with somebody and they say, well, we offer a uh, works pension and you pay into it and say well I don't want that because I've, I've asked you guys to uh, you know I want to name my boyfriend I'm going to go with this other company I'm going to pay my money into them because they will if anything happens to me make sure that my boyfriend or my girlfriend is you know able to claim on, mm -hmm. uh, on this I agree well here, here's my proposal that in uh New Hampshire next month, you, me, and uh, Daniel will have a bromance. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't what? date. I don't what? date. I don't date ugly folks. <laughs> bromance, man. It's a bromance. It's not gay. To sell back and sell Um, you know, it really pisses me off because there's there's really a lot of hypocrisy on this issue because. On the news, you know, the conservatives, they say, well, if we allow gay marriage, then, you know, when that'll lead to polygamy. Right. And and the, the defenders of gay marriage say, well, no, it's different. And right. I just want to say, you fucking hypocrites. So now people who want to have more than one spouse should not be able to? So yeah, the state okay. should recognize you're not mainstream views of marriage, but they can't recognize someone else's? Go fuck yourself. If you well, they're playing politics, right? They're playing politics. They, they know that they have to try to push something gradual, incremental. They remind me of these medical marijuana uh, supporters, right? So they're for medical marijuana because marijuana has legitimate medical uses, blah, 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 which actually I am skeptical of. I think most medical marijuana people are complete bullshitters. They're just exaggerating <laughs> the claims to try to get it decriminalized. Probably. It's a tactic. It's a political cares? tactic. I mean, how can smoking soot and carcinogens and hallucinogens into your lungs be good for you? I really don't get it. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Well, it's not soot. Soot burned leaves. Well, it's, it's not car. It's not a carcinogen for sure. <coughs> I know that. All right, not a car okay. Twenty-two year old college. <laughs> now you sound like the news. You're making it sound. No, oh, terrorist. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you're in favor of drug legalization, be in favor of it on a principled basis. Yes, Say, your yeah, fucking body. Smoke cigarettes are annoying, and they're they're assholes, and and pot, and they're and they're they're jellyheads. Well, so the but they have the, the right day, to do it. End of the day, it's your body, and you should be allowed to put in it whatever you want to put into it. And when you're denied that right, then basically you're a slave. Well, yeah, actually, that's, that's the basic Lou, point. Chris Lou Lou would say that Kinsella does not believe you own your body. Because <laughs> did you read that thing I showed you? What? 
Oh man, hold on. Let me let me find it. This is what Chris Larue wrote, and it was so ridiculous. Oh 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 oh, oh about the vagina and the and the and the and 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 the sex and oh yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Wait, so, what is this? Oh, some insane guy that, that has been a bugbear of us libertarians for years. Chris Larue, Chris Barbertarian, and Cap Larue. He has like a million names. He, he thinks there should be patent and copyright because. Oh yeah, this is what he wrote. IP commies, uh, which is what you and me and, and Jane, you and Jane would say, <laughs> your asshole and vagina are not rivalrous or scarce, are not property because lots of people can fuck it, and you will still have it. No voluntary <laughs> term restrictions can be put on asshole or vagina entry because you don't own that. It's just like the stupidest argument I've ever heard. That's hilarious. Like, I mean, that's pretty funny, though. It's you're like th that's like right. saying we're against we're not against rape because after the woman is raped, she still has her vagina. Yeah, it's not rape if you say surprise, right? I mean, it's but, ridiculous. So this is this is what I responded to him. If a girl lends you her vagina and you make copies of it, then you can fuck it all you want. But that wouldn't be rape since the copy of her vagina is not her vagina. You now we're getting into 3D printing in Japan talk topics, yeah. which I didn't expect to go to. But okay. <laughs> each each fuck is a separate exchange of the vagina. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> so, uh, so I asked him if a girl lent you her vagina and you made a copy of it and gave the copy to friends, would you be the sole rapist or would it be gang rape? And I and I asked him that because he said third parties are not bound. So according to his own logic, it wouldn't be gang rape. Well, then how could it be rape? I, it doesn't make sense. He's just confused. I agree with you. I like that. Uh, and I think this is a good point. Let's end it on a high note. That's very good, Daniel. It's time <laughs> to end it on the high note of Chris Pickler, rape, rape fantasies or yes, whatever they are. Daniel, Japanese. take your hand. Take your palm and put it directly on yeah. your face, man. Yeah. What's that? What's that mean? Face palm, dude. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Christ. Guys, we we gotta go. We have people <laughs> I have, to do things to me. I have a question for Thomas to find out if he's a libertarian or not. What's up? Should yes, government or not. should government censor speech, press, media, or the internet? Wait, what? Should government censor speech, press, or media, or the no, internet? No, they should fuck off and let me download my shit on Pirate Bay. <laughs> <laughs> you Sounds pretty libertarian to me. <laughs> Wait, I mean, not Pirate Bay, you know. I don't know what they're talking about. What? Brownies? This is going to be on the internet, right? It will yeah. be on the internet. Oh, cool. then, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know that website, so. <laughs> I have not had such a relationship with that woman. <laughs> we got to go, guys. Had fun. Right. Thanks a lot. All Take right. care. It was fun. Take care. Bye. Bye. Peace out, brothers. Peace out. Take it up, bro. Take it up, broadcast, and stay on air. <laughs>